Hello, Facebook, and welcome to another episode of Dental Speaker Institute's Facebook Live. It's Tuesday night, and we are back here with another dental speaking expert. Tonight, I'm so thrilled and excited to be able to um, introduce you to Mark LeBlanc. Now, I know that many of you already know Mark. In fact, I know because I've had several people today tell me they were so excited to, to listen in tonight, Mark, to what you would have to share with us. So thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. <laughs> it is fun. We're like a tech savvy almost. <laughs> Well, I'm going to ask you actually to do your own intro, which sometimes speakers have to do. But if you don't mind giving us just a couple minutes of what is it from your background that would be relevant to what we're going to chat about tonight that you could share with us about what brought you to this point. And while you're doing that, I'm going to look out here on my Facebook, on my phone, and make sure we're actually live. And if you are out there watching us, tuning in, would you just please mark in the mark <laughs> post in the comments, hello, Mark. Um, let us know that you're out there and that um, everything's um, active as we would want it to be. All right, Mark, take it away. All right. Well, uh, wonderful to be with you. And I'm thrilled um, and honored uh, that I will be uh, your opening and closing speaker in January. I mean, that is a rare thing. That is a rare opportunity for a keynote uh, speaker. So I, I could not be uh, more excited. Um, awesome. What got me here is um, 36 years ago, I walked into a meeting of the Minnesota chapter of the National Speakers Association at 21 years old. And it was as if a switch went off in my head and my heart and my gut. And it was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. And I went home for Christmas a couple of weeks later and I told my dad, I said, I now know what I wanna do for the rest of my life. And he said, what's that? And I said, I'm gonna be a professional speaker. And he said, can you make any money doing that? And I said, I don't know, but I met this group called NSA and they're all rich. <laughs> now, little did I know then uh, what I know today, uh, they were not all rich. Um, but what I did learn and discover was where could a young guy at 21 put a toe and later a foot and later go all in on a career uh, called professional speaking. And it, it's not been an easy uh, path for me. Uh, sometimes people think that uh, everything I do works um, and it doesn't. Um, it's been really quite uh, a long road for me. I was a part-time speaker uh, from 1982 to 1992 while I owned uh, a creative and printing business. And over the course of that 10 years, I had a lot of missteps and, and started to find my voice and find my way and then made the decision to sell that business in 92 and speak full time. And since then, um, I've certainly given over a thousand presentations and uh, published several books and coached a number of people. And I'm, I'm living the dream today that I set out uh, 36 years ago. Uh, but there was certainly a lot of blood, sweat, and fear um, that went into uh, the evolution of my career. Thank you for that. Um, and as you're talking, I'm thinking, I don't even remember when I first met you, except that I do remember where it was. I couldn't tell you when, but you taught a class at the at NSA's annual National Speaker Association's annual session for newcomers. So it had to have been my very first NSA meeting. Mm -hmm. And you were the first educator that taught me there, and isn't it funny how things come around? Like who would have even guessed then where we're at now in 2018, Mark, which is kind of funny. I hate to ask you, but may I, what, what year might that have been? Well, I remember um, Andy Andrews was the hilarious opener. Does that help? I, I was think that Georgia? was Atlanta. Yes, and I think that was when Dr. Paul Homley received a CSP, who's also a faculty member, which is like funny that he had, uh, I met him there too. Sure. Atlanta. Sure. What year was that, do you think? I'm trying to think. Um, 
10 years at least. Well, I, I, I want to say 2006. Um, 12? Like 2006. So I'm just thinking 12 years ago, that's probably about right in my mind, because I started with about 2001 with Catherine I tell belt. Okay. Um, so it probably was about a couple of years in. It was yeah. 2006. In fact, that was the meeting where I was uh, elected vice president of the National Speakers Association, and I would go on to be president-elect and then serve as president in 2007 and 2008. Yes. And... Um, we had a near miss there again. Eric Chester, I think is his name, asked me to speak on the the admin team's roundtable that year in New York as well. So, uh, yeah, anyway, it's just kind of fun for us to reminisce. But what's interesting to me is that it feels like it was kind of a meant to be thing. And what I wanted to mention for those who are, are listening in and who have also worked with you and who know you. Um, I'm just so grateful that our paths have crossed all well, the couple times every so many years way back in the day. But then uh, several years ago, I started working with Mark. He's been my whatever it takes uh, coach, my business coach, and has made all the difference in the world for my business. And I would even share with you all that um, the reason we have Dental Speaker Institute and Jumpstart came from a seed that Mark planted in my mind or helped me nurture in my mind around maybe he and I would do a workshop together. <laughs> and then it just grew and grew and grew and grew from there. And so um, I am so grateful um, that, that we're here today. So why are we here today? We're here to share some pearls of wisdom uh, around um, the, the many years that you have been a, a professional speaker and also a coach of entrepreneurs. I just I love that you have both of those um, really deep levels of experience. If um, our listeners are anywhere from brand new or wanting to be new speakers to someone who's had 10, 20, 30 years of experience, are there some pearls of wisdom that you would share with pretty much any speaker that you know would really help them grow their business? Oh, for sure. And it really doesn't matter whether you're just stepping into uh, this profession and just because you might have been in it for 10 or 20 years doesn't necessarily mean that you've got it all figured out. Um, because as the industry matures, as, it, as things evolve, um, sometimes we need to go back to the well, uh, so to speak. Um, I, I think, um, you know, my feeling is, and this is somewhat of an optimistic uh, viewpoint, but there's never been a better time uh, to be a professional speaker. You know, sometimes I hear speakers talk about pre-2008 uh, when the economy uh, went down or before 9-11. And I've been over, I've been full time since 1992. I was never on any gravy train uh, prior to 9/11 or um, you know prior to uh, 2007. Um, I, I I think the opportunities are there just as much as they ever have been. Um, but I think what happens, especially in those uh, times when maybe we are in a valley, maybe because of the economy or um, maybe we're just uh, been in business for a while and we're stuck or stagnant or we're stalled out a, a little bit. I think first and foremost today, more than ever, um, speakers need to develop an extreme uh, sliver of focus. Uh, I, I mean, there you are. You always have a degree of focus. In fact, um, Vanessa, back in 2006. Um, when our paths first crossed, uh, if you had asked somebody about me, they might have said, oh, he's a pretty sharp guy, you know, kind of smart. Um, you know, he's got a couple of good uh, strategies or two, but man, is he focused. Mm. And, and quite frankly, when I look back now in the rearview mirror, maybe I was 82% focused um, or 84% focused. Um, but today, I feel like I'm about 97% uh, focused. And sometimes taking it those last uh, 8, 10, 12 points of uh, degrees of focus are really the most challenging um, and often uh, requires a, a degree or uh, a depth of resolve. 
um, because there's so many things coming across our desk uh, the longer you've been uh, in business for yourself uh, that it is incredibly easy to go off on a, what I call a tangent uh, disguised uh, as an opportunity. And so, so much of my work, whether it's in a presentation, whether it's in a coaching assignment, as you know, or one of my achiever circles, it's about the frames, the formulas, the formats, the bringing a sense of structure uh, to your business model that are more likely to keep you on path mm -hmm. and moving forward in the direction of your dream. So what I think I hear you saying as you talk about focus then is that there are these strategies and these tools and these frameworks that help us. So once you choose your goal and your direction, they help you be able to eliminate distraction to be able to help you focus on not chasing shiny objects or going down rabbit holes, but instead to be able to stay true to your course. Am I understanding that right? Um, and, and that is correct. And I think dental speakers are, already have half the battle won. Mm -hmm. um, because the strategic decision that a speaker must make, um, whether they realize it or not, is uh, from a positioning perspective, you either become known for a particular topic or area of expertise, or you become known to or known in a particular target market. So for um, speakers who want to enter or advance in the world uh, of dentistry, they've already got the known to decision made. Most speakers outside of dental are challenged by the idea that they can speak anywhere, anytime, any place for any type of organization. Now, if you're a, an inspirational or motivational speaker, that, that, that may be true. Um, but even then, I encourage people to find a sliver of focus. Uh, sometimes I call it your primary focus. Um, but dental speakers, I've got one leg up already uh, on other speakers. And then the challenge becomes, what do you want? What specifically do you want to be known for? Um, I'm known for uh, business development and I'm known for my signature work around growing a business or a, a practice. All of my career has been built in the world of uh, focused on professional services. And of course, in the last uh, six or seven years, uh, thanks to so many uh, in the dental world, I'm beginning to make a bit of a name for myself uh, in the dental world. So for those of uh, our listeners who don't already know that um, niche area, um, which I think is what we're talking about, do you have um, guidance on how they can determine? I mean, I, I find that in my own coaching with dental speakers, and I've worked with dental speakers for about 18 years now, that um, they either come to me knowing that they're a case acceptance speaker or there's 13 things they could speak on, <laughs> you know, or five or six, um, which ends up becoming really um, muddied and it makes it hard to be seen as an expert, I think. Do you have advice on how someone could go about narrowing that down? For sure. And, um, and you've heard me say this uh, way too many times, but I'm gonna have to say it again, for not for you, but for the viewers. Um, the more focused you are, the easier uh, everything becomes and um, you tend to get what you focus on. And I like to live in a world of two or more right answers. So whether somebody comes to you and they say, um, I, have, I have particular expertise and interest in X, case acceptance or you know, pick a topic, um, or if they come, and, and, and that's easier by the way, to accelerate results, but even if somebody comes to you or to me with multiple topics, um, it's not possible to be an expert on more than one topic. Although uh, sometimes speakers are encouraged to say, you know, I'm, I'm an expert on sales leadership and management. 
Well, candidly, you can't be an expert in all three areas. It's, it's, it's just not possible. Um, it's okay to speak on or to list or to promote multiple topics, but I would encourage people to shine a light on one. What is the one topic or the one presentation that they specifically want to get booked for more often? Um, so if they want to speak on leadership, management, sales, and service in the dental industry, great. Um, rank them. Yeah. And quite frankly, the elephant in the room is fear of making decisions um, that might seem to limit us when, in fact, some of these decisions that we make can be incredibly liberating. And so that ultimately leads us to what you would call like our signature sale. We might have multiple areas. As I, I often mention to my um, the speakers that I work with, that mark, uh, speaking is a marketing activity. That uh, for most speakers in dentistry, not all, but for most, they're speaking so that they can get that exposure, so that they can then attract those clients and sell the book or the services, the consulting, whatever. So ultimately, what I hear you saying is that once we number them and we decide that um, from your example that sales is really our, our number one priority and that leadership and communication maybe some support those then that leads to our signature sale a, a turning point for me in the evolution of my speaking career was um, i'm going to say about the mid to late 90s um, i had four different uh, areas that I wanted to speak in. Even though they were somewhat uh, connected, uh, my four programs were growing your business, marketing for professionals, building repeat and referral business, and then the fourth one I don't even remember today, which should tell you just how exciting that uh, one was. Um, but I remember I wasn't getting any traction really in any one of them. And one day I woke up and thought, if I could do growing your business 50 times a year at, at my then current fee, I'd be happier than a pig in mud. And I essentially set aside the other three presentations and I put a bright spotlight on growing your business. Once I made that decision, of course, a lot of people were telling me at this time, you know, Mark, you're a pretty sharp guy. You should write a book. Now, my confidence as a writer was not very high. Um, it was getting higher as a speaker. It was pretty high as a coach or mentor, um, but was not very high as a writer. Um, but I, you know, did a little bit of research and kind of sucked it up, you know, uh, set aside my fears a bit and published in late 1999 my book, uh, Growing Your Business. And uh, hey, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Visualize. Um, people, people laugh at me and they tease me about my small mass market paperback book, um, but I moved over 75,000 copies um, of that little book. And the statistic that I'm most proud of is that I have over 800 quantity orders of that book. And that book, you know, I jokingly refer to was published before Al Gore invented the internet. Um, so it really doesn't talk about, um, you know, it was published before we even heard the, uttered the words social media or Facebook uh, or Twitter. And um, I still get orders for 50 copies or more on average once a week. And people say, Mark, how does that happen? And it all goes back to that strategic decision. You either become known for something or you become known to. I became known for growing your business. So it would only make sense that I would continue to sell them um, because I'm doing 50 presentations a year still titled growing your business or building your practice or, you know, uh, growing your clinic, what, you know, it's something um, uh, along the lines of business development. 
Um, so, you know, that was a strategic decision that I made that I want to say now was accidentally brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a wonderful, uh, easy read, uh, you know, to be able to get through on a plane ride or a car ride. Um, I've, I've read it a couple of times. A lot of great principles that you're talking about that you share in some of your workshops and with your consulting clients are certainly in there. I want to take a quick break to just recognize them and say hello to some of those who are listening in. We have a Candace Martin. Hello. Thank you for your comments. And yes, Candace, you can hear back to the, we missed the first couple of minutes or you'll certainly be able to hear it back on the replay. And we also have Sandra listening in and Linda. Thank you for just a, as just a couple of um, our multiple people who are listening in. Thank you all for listening tonight. And if any of you have questions for Mark, just go ahead and put it in the, the comments and we'll be sure to, to ask that um, before we're done here. Now, Mark, when you and I first started working together, um, you had encouraged me first to go to one of your workshops, the Achiever Circle workshop, to see it was kind of like our dating before we get married, to see if there's like a fit, right? Mm -hmm. To see if um, it spoke to me and uh, if it felt like it would be a good fit for you. And I'm, I'm so glad I did. In fact, I've been back to Achiever Circle a couple of times since then, would you just, um, for those who are listening, and just give us a quick um, idea of what is that Achiever Circle? Well, the Achiever Circle began in the year 2000 at a time when there were a lot of smart people were putting on um, what they were calling boot camps. And the essence was we're going to work, you know, 12 hours a day for three or four days, and we're going to throw so much at you, it's going to make your head spin. And I learned from one of my heroes, Joel Weldon, um, who actually is in, in the Phoenix area, um, when everybody is going one way, um, look to go the other way. And I began to play with a concept called the anti boot camp. And, and I designed, I sat down one day and I designed a weekend experience that would start at three o'clock on Friday and end at noon on Sunday. And it would become the, in, in my mind, the ultimate business development retreat for up to uh, 15 full-time independent professionals. And just this last weekend, um, I did my 138th Achiever Circle Business Retreat. It's become a bit of a phenomenon, um, but it is, uh, quite frankly, I think it's the bomb. Um, I think it took me 100 retreats to realize just the impact that it could have on somebody's career. And I almost will shame somebody uh, into, into going um, because I know how impactful that it can be in terms of creating a model for your business you're excited about in an intimate and intensive uh, session with plenty of breaks and a lot of humor uh, thrown in. Um, but whether somebody is entering whether they've been in business for 20 years or more, whether they feel like they're doing well, we zero in on uh, the, the challenges of change and what will move people forward, shorten their learning curve and accelerate their results. I noticed too that each time I attend your Achiever Circle, it's different. So it's not that you go once and you never come back. I, I'm surprised that not surprised, but like delighted each time I attend that it really feels like it's a different course. And I think you're um, really customizing it to who's in, in your group and, and what the needs are. Um, sure, I, I am. And, and, and certainly, you know, we typically will have between seven or eight and 15, 14 or 15 on a weekend. We have them complete pre-planning materials that we, we review carefully. And so it kind of ebbs and flows. In fact, this last uh, weekend, uh, my Friday afternoon, you wouldn't even recognize it. Um, I am constantly uh, changing it up. And, um, you know, I tell people, if you, if you liked it eight years ago or five years ago or three years ago, you'd love it now um, because it's been really amped up. That's awesome. Well, two things. First of all, hey, Mary Fox, thanks for listening in. <laughs> 
And I just ran a um, URL past the little marching ants across the bottom, which was a link over on our Dental Speaker Institute site to the faculty page. And if you visit there and scroll down, you'll be able to see the dates of Mark's upcoming Achiever Circle for those of you who are interested and, and learning more about that. And I'm also, before we leave this subject, I'm just gonna also show, I believe I've got your email right, Mark at growingyourbusiness.com. Yes. Yeah, awesome. So you can reach out to Mark to learn more about those Achiever Circle workshops. Um, now the reason I was thinking about them is that, um, you know, so many of the strategies and frameworks and tools that we talked about would you learn through um, those type of workshops. And as we thought about um, Jumpstart and the opening and closing keynote, um, I wondered if you could maybe give us a little teaser. Uh, what, what will we be learning from you at Jumpstart? Well, people should be afraid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, because uh, one of the things we're going to do, um, I'm going to hold up a mirror, um, so to speak, to um, the truth. Um, one of the challenges that speakers have is what I call this relentless getting ready to get ready mode. Um, and I wanna dispel some of those um, ideas and myths that, that hold us back where people are, you know, year after year after year. Um, you know, uh, once I get my website done, then I'm really gonna put myself out there. Once I create a folder with materials in it, I'm really gonna put myself out there. Uh, once I get my book published, I'm really going to put myself out there. And we have to find that blend and balance between creating a solid set of marketing tools and executing a mix of marketing strategies. And so in January, we're going to look at um, how to frame um, what a speaker, what the potential is today um, in speaker land. Um, but not only what your potential is, where it is, and where you need to aim the execution of your strategies. We're going to take a look at a single concept, a single marketing tool, and a single strategy. I'm going to dive deep on the tool, the concept, and the one strategy that I will guarantee will create a pivot or a turning point um, and move somebody forward wherever they are. And, and the, the reason I say, you know, uh, be afraid is that sometimes the more focused you are, it results in, oh my gosh, now I know what I need to know. I know what I need to do. Now I need to hit the switch and put myself out there. Um, so I know a lot of people have worked with you on their site or speaker packets, and they're not gonna do much good if we're not executing a mix of strategies, and in particular, the one strategy that I'm gonna go deep on um, and, and give you the strategy, give you four areas to aim the strategy, um, how to create messaging and talking points around the tools or the tool that you go after uh, these speaking opportunities. So I can hardly wait. And, and the opportunity to be the opening and closing speaker is, uh, uh, is unprecedented. I'm excited about it. It's going to be, I love the circular construction of that. You'll, you'll kick it off, you'll wrap a bow on it at the end. So a couple things you said in there I'd love to um, speak to. Um, the flipping a switch is something that I've often thought um, we hope as speakers that we can just find that switch to flip and then it just comes flooding in and it just doesn't come flooding in without some action, as you would say. And um, the techniques that you speak to, are, I, I'm not sure exactly which you're going to be sharing. So I'm just gonna share from my own personal experience, some things that I learned was the power of not having this uh, splatter approach to marketing. You know, like I feel like we have to be excited about social media and we have to be like sending out emails and writing blogs and sending a newsletter and like all these things. 
what I learned from you was that um, I have, I have, I have people. <laughs> I have people who've worked with me, people who have been interested in working with me. And if I just, if I dial it back down to literally dialing it, right, to actually hopping back on a phone with someone, is and that's one of my my favorite, and I think one of the most effective strategies that I've learned from the work with you, Mark, is the power of being in consistent contact with <clears throat> with your clients, with your past clients, that sort of thing. It's made a huge difference in my business. And also another thing that I really learned from you was the power of um, having what you would call an advocate. We all have those people we know would go to bat for us. We know those people who would refer to us um, and, and the importance of staying in touch with them. I don't think that's a real new concept, right? I mean, we've heard that before for years, but I, I'm assuming other speakers may be like me in that I just get so busy with the, what's on my agenda for the day and the talking to people that are scheduled on my, on my list. Do I need to call today uh, for, for scheduled phone calls that I don't always remember to be consistent about reaching out and staying in contact with these advocates or with these potential clients. And I know that you would be able to explain that way better than I, and I'm, I'm sure you will either at Jumpstart or in one of your, in your workshops, but I just wanted to share the, the power of that. That has been a huge game changer for my business and, and really um, ramping up um, you know, the bottom line financially, but also it has really ramped up our exposure that I didn't need to do all those other things. I don't need to send all those newsletters and write all the blogs and um, that what I do on social media, I enjoy um, and, I, and I don't do all social media. Um, and so that's been really freeing uh, to be able to know that we can kind of choose what speaks to us and then master it. Well, and I think, well, you certainly are doing a good job with Facebook Live. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm very impressed uh, <laughs> as Mr. Non, Non-Technical. Um, uh, I'm incredibly impressed. Thank um, you. You know, the advocate strategy that you talk about, if it's okay, I might just spend uh, a minute or two on that strategy. Please. Um, it's one of my signature strategies and um, it, it really is rather simple and you're right. Um, it's not something we necessarily haven't heard before, um, but when I can't get my arms around something, I have to frame it. And I think that's one of the things that I've been able to do well over time is frame different strategies and bring some structure to it. So you're referring to what I call my target 25 advocate strategy. And the essence of the strategy is put together a list of 25, or if you don't have 25, up to 25 real champions and cheerleaders. Those people who know you, believe you, support you, will go out of their way to make a positive connection uh, on your behalf. And put together a list of these advocates, and then it becomes a top of mind strategy. I refer to it as the least cost, highest return strategy that a speaker or, or anybody in any business can put into play. And you create a top of mind presence by connecting with your group of advocates every 30 days, not to ask them for referrals every 30 days, just to maintain top of mind presence. Um, because, you, Vanessa, it it feels like we blinked and a year went by. Um, we watched a television show and a decade went by. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we're so, we have so many things going on that if we don't stay on top of it, um, good people slip through the cracks. And I am just as guilty um, as many people are of letting good people slip through the cracks. And so if you if you identify that list of up to 25 and you create a series of very simple uh, connections um, that maintain that top of mind presence. I mean, one month it might be your newsletter. Another month it might be a telephone call. Another month it might be sending an article that you wrote and sending it to the 25 people. Um, 
And when I send them an article, I'll email it to them because I know my advocates are more likely to forward it mm. to others. So the easier you make it for people to refer you or to leverage your uh, connection and relationship, so much the better. Um, sometimes I will send, um, people will send a copy of their book to their 25 advocates. Well, a better idea is to send two books to each advocate, uh, one for them and one for them to pass off. An even better idea is put it in a package where one book is in a mailing envelope already. Because mm -hmm. if all of a sudden I receive two copies of someone's book, one for me and one um, in a bubble wrap envelope, it's not going to take long for me to find an address and a post-it note and say, hey, you need to consider this speaker at one of your meetings in the next year. Um, so I'm constantly applying creativity um, to that strategy. But I, I tend to spend between zero and $100 a month and between one and four hours a month on that strategy. It's the least cost, highest return strategy that somebody can put into play. Oh, I love that. And that reminds me of a, of a suggestion you gave me for our jumpstart was to create a postcard. So for any of our speakers who are doing their own self-sponsored workshops, to create a postcard and to send it off um, already stamped, leave a place on the back for someone to write, but to send it off to those advocates that you know would want to forward it to some people. It makes it easy for them just to say, hey, John, thought you'd really be, be interested in attending this workshop. And send it off to your clients or our dental consulting clients, um, or sorry, our dental consulting speakers who are listening in and doing their own seminars could certainly um, do some, some similar things as well. I mean, it just, it goes on and on. It's really just limited by your creativity. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we have a question. And thank you for elaborating on Advocate. I, I love that strategy. I don't give it as much love as I should, but when I have in the past, it's always um, been very um, a good thing. So our friend, um, Wendy Askins, asked a question here on Facebook. And we know Wendy from Jumpstart 2018. Wendy, it's great to hear from you. And um, Wendy says she needs help with balancing speaking engagements and then executing the work that makes um, that would make her valuable to her clients. So I think handling the, the workload of it, you know, getting out and doing the speaking as well as balancing, getting back and then doing the work with their clients. Do you have suggestions and thoughts on that? Ooh, therapy. Um, <laughs> um, it, 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 it obviously is a challenge and the, 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 the longer you're in the business and the more in demand you become, the, the more your calendar fills up, uh, the more challenging it can be. And as someone who has, you know, I speak 50 times a year, I, I coach 50 professionals a year, I'll do eight achiever circles this year, um, and we have a new book coming out by the end of the year, my fourth book, uh, titled Defining You, um, how to put together a defining statement, a defining paragraph, and a defining story. I love that. So, in fact, we should have those uh, in January for uh, Jumpstart. So I'm um, excited to put a little teaser in for that book. Um, yeah. But I, I think one of my best practices, it was Wendy, right? Wendy. Mm -hmm. One of my best practices, I have nine. And one of my best practices is number three, uh, create the profile of your ideal week. And you get an opportunity to look in the crystal ball and say, I'm, you know, I'm the captain of my ship. You know, I'm in charge here. Um, uh, how do I want my week to look? And because not every week uh, is filled with speaking engagements for people. So first start with, what does your ideal day or week look like when you're off the road? And how do you create boundaries between work and home? And I have a very tight profile um, to my ideal week. And from time to time, it, it swells a little bit or I fudge a little bit here and there. Um, it's fairly defined. 
And then my best practice four is maintain your daily focus. And whatever your goal is, in the morning, ask yourself these two questions. In the morning, your AM question is, what am I doing today to reach my goal of X? And at the end of the day, your PM question is, what did I do today to reach my goal of X? And if you get into the habit of asking those, the AM and PM question every day, you will start to make your decisions differently with respect to how you spend your time, your energy, your money, and your creativity. Um, and so those are some lighthouse questions or lighthouse guides for, for staying on path. And when you get off track, um, how you can get back to a center very quickly. Um, and obviously best practice, uh, my next one is best practice five, develop your will do list. Focus on what you will do, not what you could do if conditions were perfect. We tend to be list makers, and as long as we're checking something off the list, we feel happy and we feel productive. But that doesn't mean we're, you know, focusing on the right actions or the right activities. Um, so developing a shorter but more powerful will-do list pulled from your to-do list um, is a step in the right direction as well. Those are really powerful um, tips and um, um, strategies. Um, and one that I'd like to throw in too to, to give a shout out for um, another one of our colleagues at, at DSI is um, the idea of working with a virtual assistant when you get to that point where you can have a little help there. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Schultz, another faculty member with Dental Speaker Institute has a wonderful new service where she can help you find a virtual assistant. She found Mackenzie for us recently, who's joined our team. We just love her. She's a perfect fit. Um, and which is, it's a, not always easy to find the right fit. And so I want to mention yeah. that as an option when they're ready to, to do that. You're right. And I, I make things sound pretty simple. Um, it's not, um, but I mean, I do have a full-time uh, virtual assistant her name is uh, Kylie, the angel known as Kylie. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's an independent contractor, full-time virtual. Um, but she's been with me now full-time for about 10 years. So I went many years uh, with no one. But as you reach certain milestones in the evolution of your business and your business model, you know, and, and, I, and I often tell people, start, start, find somebody for a hundred, you know, when you're ready, find somebody for $100 a week. And then pretty soon, uh, as you work together more effectively, you'll be able to expand that to maybe $200 a week, and then maybe to $400 a week. Yeah. Um, a lot of people want to get to a place where they can afford somebody full time. Mm -hmm. Kylie started with me for $100 a week. Um, and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Oh, agreed. Agreed. Awesome. Well, I think we're probably getting close to the end of our time, Mark. I know we have another question here asking for dates of your Achiever Circle. I've got them here in front of me. I'm going to read them, and then you just tell me if i am got anything that I didn't. That I don't have corrects here. Looks like the next dates are in La Jolla, November 9th through 11. Correct. Nashville, December 7 through 9. Those are the next two, one a month for the next couple months. And then in 2019, we have Minneapolis, January, I'm sorry, February 1 through 3. La Jolla, great place to go, February 22 to 24. Not that Minneapolis is bad or Nashville, but La Jolla is like the bomb. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I love La Jolla. And then, then we have Minneapolis again, May 3rd through 5th. And again, if you want that entire list, um, you could email mark at growingyourbusiness.com to find out more. Or we do have the list on Dental Speaker Institute on the faculty page. Just scroll a little ways down, you'll see Mark's section and, and they're there. So um, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. We're so looking forward to um, having just spent, you know, spending a couple of days with you and January in Chandler and um, hearing you speak there and, and, and share your wisdom with us there. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate well, your time. You're very welcome. And I, I can hardly wait 
And, you know, I just, I really want people to understand um, the opportunities are great. And I, and I really believe um, if you want to do more of the good work that you feel called and compelled to do, um, please, please, um, I beg you, <laughs> um, make plans to join us uh, for Jumpstart. I, I really believe with all my heart and my soul, the world needs to hear you. Um, the world needs to read you. And you can have the kind of impact and influence you really want to have with the people that you serve best. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I agree. Um, and can, let's just say a little bit about Jumpstart before we go. Um, well, just want to kind of bring an update to everyone. Um, our, our program is set. We have uh, three full days of really dive deep, roll up your sleeves, workshop type um, education. We really are an educational group at our core, so come prepared to learn. We also have networking opportunities, and we're going to be having, a, I don't have the, the final, 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 but it looks like we have several major meetings um, represented. I'll be able to announce that more fully in a couple of weeks, um, as well as um, all sizes of dental meetings. We'll, we'll be sending uh, meeting planners to network with us and to scout those who are speaking. Um, it's too late to put your name in this um, year as a speaker uh, um, for the competition or the showcase, but certainly for next year and certainly to be able to network for a couple of days with uh, the meeting planners, the other industry VIPs that are there. We'll have publishers, editors, and um, of course our sponsors that will be there that are offer wonderful services and want to meet you and want to be able to um, share with you what they have going and see how you can partner together. So it's more than, than just the education, which the education is um, a whole lot. We, I'm just so excited um, for uh, January 3rd through 5th, 2019. You can save $300 off your registration till the end of the month with the, the discount code Early bird. You can sign up at Jumpstart 2019 or shoot an email to info at thedentalspeaker.com. That's my email. I'd be happy to to um, get back with you, answer any questions. So, Mark, thank you. And until next time, y'all be well, and we'll talk to you. Um, won't have an episode next Tuesday because we will be in Hawaii for the ADA meeting, and next Tuesday will be Academy of Dental Management Consultant meeting. So many of you will be um, meeting with us there. Uh, and so we'll see you in Hawaii and we'll be circling back in two weeks for your next episode of DSI Live. Thank you so much for joining us and until next time, be well.